Hello, cruising world. Oh, sorry. Hello, cruising world. Mick the suit go with you again. We're still in COVID. We're still not cruising. Rumours are abound that they might start a few ships in November. I'm on the Conquest back to back in November. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. We will find out. Anyways, I haven't done a video in a while, so I figured it's time to do one. So what am I going to do today? I'm going to tell you all about things to do in Alaska. Now, the Freedom's going to Alaska right now. The Miracle's doing journeys via cruises from um, San Francisco up there in the summer. The majority will be on the Freedom as it stands right now. I, I am actually booked in July 2022 to go up there. Uh, I've got a rather special cabin, a little secret cabin you may not know about. If you have the opportunity to get this cabin, take a look. It's a 6K cabin is the category. It's technically an ocean view, a bit more expensive, no doubt. It's at the front of the ship on deck nine. There's only two of them. And there's also four or five in between that have just one big window. I can only imagine how great this might be for Alaska. We will find out. But what else is it gonna be when you get ashore in Alaska? I have a few ideas at each port of call. Let me know what you think. Always here if you have questions, but watch this for now. So, most cruises will go from Seattle, some from San Francisco, like I said, but I'm gonna give you a quick tour of a couple of things to do in Seattle, either before or after your cruise. Also, don't forget, I have a video of the um, cruise port in Seattle, going through security and all that good stuff. Look it up on my, uh, on my channel, you'll find it, it might help you. So, we did a little day tour around Seattle, there's a Space Needle in the background, you obviously got things like Pike's Market, Terrible pictures of the people throwing the fish because we weren't ready, but that's where it happens. Another picture of the Space Needle. Definitely recommend Chihuly, Chihuly something or other. Glass plays, it's right next to the Space Needle. You can get two for one tickets and they have pretty amazing stuff in there. I'm not really a big fan, but I was after this. And also from up the Space Needle, you'll get some great views of Seattle. You can see right there. Don't forget, get some seafood. That was an all you can eat crab meal we had. It was unbelievable. There's another great restaurant we ate in called The Pink Door, superb. And we also did a local day tour of all sorts of sights and sounds of Seattle. As you'll see from these pictures here, we saw trolls, we saw a boat going through a lock that was kind of cool to watch, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't sound fascinating, but it's quite interesting. Uh, more great views from a park up above Seattle looking down on it. Um, we went back into Seattle afterwards. Again, another terrible picture of them throwing the fish. And there's the famous bubble gum wall. I don't get it, but a lot of people do. Apparently, you eat a bit of gum and you stick it on the wall. Ooh. Anyway, that's a few things you can do. Oh, we also did an underground tour, but we weren't allowed to take pictures on that. But it was pretty cool. Um, Bob, something or other, messaged me and I'll give you the name. But it was a pretty cool tour we did. Uh, a lot of weird stuff went on in Seattle back in the day. Anyway, onto the cruise. So. You're gonna leave from Seattle. Again, check out my video of the port review. It's pretty cool. Very simple process getting on the ship. And then once you leave, um, you will have a day at sea. And then typically you'll go to a place called Tracy Arm Fjord. Now Tracy Arm Fjord has a uh, excursion that you will see on the website. You go, what is it? Well, you get off the ship onto a slightly smaller ship and it takes you all the way along the fjord so you can see a great example of ice and all that good stuff at the end. I will show you exactly what I mean by flicking through some of these pictures we took of it right here. You will actually see a glacier at the end. So you'll be, you, obviously the ship can't get all the way at the end. So the only way to see it will be to go on this little boat. So you're gonna see all these awesome pictures and there it is at the end there. Um, and you'll get to see all this on the way back. Plenty of wildlife, great chance for a brilliant shot photo opportunity of you. More pictures of it there. And you'll see this all the way up and down. It's a good hour, two hours on this boat, and you'll get to see so much. There's some, uh, I guess, mountain sheep. I don't know what they'll call. And there's another one at the other end. Um, and then you get back on the ship. So it's, none of this is cheap, be warned. There are no cheap excursions in Alaska. And normally we do do excursions um, locally rather than with carnival. We still did a couple here locally, more so it wasn't so crowded, but the price is very, very similar. You don't get anything much cheaper. Now, after that, you're gonna go into Skagway. What I strongly recommend you do in Skagway is that you, um, you rent a Jeep and you, you're in Skagway for a good 12, 13 hours. You've got plenty of time to go and explore. So we got a Jeep and we drove up to Canada. So uh, this was us getting out 
And then you'll get some amazing views on the way up there. Um, this was our Jeep when we were in it. And then um, we went all the way up to, uh, I think it's called Carbox. You'll see a picture in a minute, I forget the name. But you'll see some of these awesome sites on the way back. You'll go through the Yukon. And we went all the way up to a little lake here. We got some cool pictures. And then we stopped for lunch. I remember I had the greatest halibut ever. I'm a lover of halibut now. So this, uh, this is actually in Canada. And then driving back, you get to see a lot of new things. We, uh, for example, we saw bears, black bears, walk across, walking across the, uh, the road there. Of course, Julie thought it would be a great idea to get out the car and walk up to get close up pictures. That was her picture, not mine. I was sensible, I stayed in the car. Anyway, and then you'll get back into Alaska after that. So that's what we did for the day. We took um, a Jeep, it was brilliant fun, on our own, at our own pace, no problems. Got to Canada and back in plenty of time to walk around downtown Skagway and have a look around it. But I mean, that's not the only thing you can do. I mean, there's some other options. Uh, they have a very famous railway, uh, the Yukon and White Pass Railroad Adventures. You can do anything you want like that. Um, you can go kayaking. I mean, there's endless things you can do. I'm just showing you what we did. And these are a few other options that were recommended to me and other things that we'd looked at that might be interesting. I'm not going kayaking. Oh, I can't swim, but you might love it. Um, there's a dog sled discovery and mushing camp. Now you're going to see uh, in um, Juneau, you can actually get in the helicopter, go up the top on the ice and do it. Rather more expensive, but this is a cheaper option if you wanted to see how it works. Um, and then another trail hiking and rafting adventure. So there's plenty of activity. Obviously, in all these ports, you can go wow watching and stuff like that. Wildlife everywhere. Um, we went in the beginning of July and we saw pretty much everything. I think the only thing we didn't see, I was disappointed, was otters. Other than that, we saw just about everything. Now, the next day you're going to be in Juneau and we got the helicopter up and we did a glacier walk, which was awesome. We considered the dog sled, but I read that you only get about 10 minutes on the actual dog sled. And I still find it hard to believe you'll get a picture with about a million people in the background. So um, we chose not to do it. That's just us. We wanted to do this instead. So there's the helicopter we get up. There was two helicopters went up with us, um, or us and one other. And you get some views like this when you're going up over the glacier. Um, amazing shots you can get when you're up there. And then you land and you get to walk. It was a little bit slippery, I'm not gonna warn you. They give you these amazing shoes with the spikes, but you're gonna get some great pictures. You'll actually see some people in the distance there. There is a longer uh, one of these tours you can do where you can actually go climbing up the glacier. Um, have a look for that one. But we just did the glacier walk and back. We were on there for probably a good half hour, 45 minutes, I reckon, walking up and down. And we got to taste some of the, uh, the water. Bring a little bag with you. You can put some of the fresh water in it. I promise you, it's amazing to taste. Um, and then you get to walk on the ice. Now, little known fact, but this blue color means it's been starved of oxygen, so it's not necessarily a positive thing. At least that's what I was told. And then the helicopter picks you back up from there and it will take you back. Other things you can do in Juno. There's a wow watching. They are wow watching everywhere, like I said, but these are some of the other ones we looked at, give you an option to go see. Um, my good friends, Stacy and Craig, recommended this one strongly. They went here, the uh, Taku Lodge Feast and Five Glacier Seaplane Discovery. He told me, if you don't tell them how great this is, I'll never talk to you again. So, Craig, Stacy, I'll put it in for you on your recommendation. If you don't like it, blame them. I'm just kidding. If they say it's good, of course it's good. Um, salmon bake. There's several food option stops. There's some crab stuff, salmon stuff, you know. So there's loads of different options of things you can do while you are there. Prices vary different, very differently. Um, this is the actual dog sledding. I mean, look, $579 per person. Bucket list things, people, bucket list. Now, the walk we did on the glacier weren't cheap either, but this was quite expensive. So make sure you know what you're doing before you, uh, before you go up it. Um, next, we went to Ketchikan. Now, we did do a local tour in Ketchikan where we went around and saw a load of different things. Um, you know, it's nothing against Carnival. You know I love Carnival, but some of their tours are a bit crowded, so we prefer to do some of the local ones, even if the price is similar, because they tend to be less crowded. And this one was the case. There's only about eight people on our, on our tour. So what did we do? Well, we did a little walk around Ketchikan. We get to see all the stuff. These are some of the shops you can walk around. Um, and the ship docks right next to this, so you're real close. Um, 
We went to a salmon, bri a, what they call a salmon ladder. This is where the salmon start coming up. And then uh, we saw somebody actually caught a salmon. Totally illegal, he shouldn't have been doing that, but he did and he showed it off to us. Luckily, we didn't report him, he could have gotten a lot of trouble. Um, so there's also this totem pole place you can go to, very popular place. You can go in these buildings and see a bunch of different stuff in there of um, totem poles. It's very, you know, if you like some of the more cultural side of things, you'll see things like this all around town. Um, obviously that's an eagle, that's in the town center. Um, this was a place they took us, a lodge where you could look at bears, look for bears. They come down there trying to get the salmon a lot. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't see anything on the day we went, but there are a lot there. You'll see the odd salmon swimming through like that. And then it's just a lot of nice little, um, nice little views. But you can do other tours too. There's a bear and sea crab fisherman's tour. We very, really, very nearly did this one. We like the look of this a lot. If we go again, we'll probably do this one. So you've got that. There's a, a Bay Bear Watch expedition. This would be a lot of fun if you saw bears. <laughs> I don't think it'd be much fun if you went there and sat there for three hours and didn't see anything. But that's the beauty in it. You never know what you're going to see. It's like a cruise. You never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Um, there's that totem pole. The Lumberjack, Lumberjack show is great for kids. I know our friends Anne and Travis, they took their kids on that one. They loved it. And that's right in town as well, right near, the, uh, near where the ship is. So you can literally walk to it from the ship. Um, there's a crabbing adventure, a wild, uh, you out see how they catch the crab and they've got pots, they bring them up and all that good stuff. So there's loads of options of different things to do while you're there, largely based around wildlife and scenery and what have you. Um, but you know, take your pick. Again, I can't stress enough, nothing's cheap. Last day, not going to make too many comments on this, but you go into Victoria. Uh, we were there for, I think, four hours. We're going back again next July and I don't even think we're in for that long. You may or may not know this, but when Carnival Cruise, they cannot go back into America unless the last stop was a foreign port. So all the other stops are in Alaska. They have to stop at a foreign port before they go back in. So they go to Victoria in Canada because it's very close to Seattle, but you get very little time. You don't even get there till mid to late evening. And by the time you get into town, everything's closed. But you're in Canada. Um, it's a beautiful little town. But I wouldn't recommend doing too much other than getting on the bus. There'll be double-decker buses waiting to take you into town and bring you back again. Um, have a walk around, grab a quick bite to eat if you want. Um, hopefully the weather's nice. Uh, it's a beautiful little town to go walk around, but there's not much else to do because you ain't got much time. Um, they have a few beautiful buildings like this. Uh, of course, we went ashore in our suit and dress combo, as you do. Um, so we got some nice pictures walking around and stuff, and it's on the waterfront, um, you know. But don't expect too much from Victoria, I guess is what I'm saying. You will see plenty of animals when you're walking around. These are across various parts of the, uh, of the cruise. We saw this black bear. It was in the middle of, I believe this was Juneau, um, maybe even Skagway. They were just sitting, watching all the shoppers go by from the back, legs just perched over the front, having a good old time. Um, we saw some starfish. You'll see lots of eagles. Don't you worry. Don't think you won't, because you will. You'll see loads of them. We saw literally hundreds. We were lucky. We saw some killer whales on a sea day. Um, so we saw a whole pod of them. As you can see, this is what pictures for us. So, you know, there's plenty of stuff to do on these tours. They are really amazing. So much fun. Um, can't recommend them more. That's a few suggestions of things to do. Um, I also definitely recommend that tour in Tracy Arm Fjord if you have the money and the budget to get off and, and go do that because you'll see a lot more than you will on the ship. But have fun. It's a bucket list trip. Make the most of it. Have a good time. A few ideas of things to do in Alaska. So there you have it. Oh, God, masks. So there you have it. My cat wants to go, but Portman, you're not allowed to go to Alaska. I'm sorry. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend a cruise to Alaska. It is amazing. For me, it's great because I work on weekends and they go Tuesday to Tuesday during summer, so I only lose one weekend. But um, that aside, can't recommend it anymore. One of our best cruises we ever did. Uh, hopefully that helped and gave you some ideas. If not, sorry. As always, hit that little subscribe button at the end there. I'm going to give you a reminder in a second. But uh, let me know if you have any ideas of anything you want to see on any of my videos. But uh, apart from that, see you later, Cruising World. Hopefully we'll be sailing soon. Oh, hang on. Hopefully we'll be sailing soon. 
Any questions? Email me anytime. Cruisingsuitguy at gmail.com. I promise I'll reply as soon as possible. Want to book a cruise or any type of travel? We are travel agents. Check out our site, elitetravelconnection.com or email me, mick at elitetravelconnection.com. We are here for you. Finally, subscribe, please. Pretty please. You know you want to. Go on. I won't beg you. Okay, I'm begging. Please. Subscribe! Thank you.